we we will record uh, this video this webinar so just in case you don't want to come up during that you can just disable your video camera so welcome everybody uh, this is the first webinar of a series that we decide to have from now until december and the first topic that we had chosen is the social media and youth because as you all know the synod has just ended on sunday and the team of the digital world for uh, and youth came up many times because it's a very crucial theme so um, for us it's very important to reflect as religious sisters so as adults how we can accompany the young people in this uh, in this process in this new world for for us but it's not uh, new for them so i will share some ideas about this topic and then we will have a time to for questions or just for comments and Perhaps you, are, you work with young people more than me. I'm more on the communication field. So my interest is more on analyzing and how to equip, equip the religious sisters to be more aware about, about the bright side and the dark side of this digital world. I know that uh, we are all adults, so I'm not talking to young people, to uh, digital native. So we are all immigrants in this world, even though I don't like this category because actually it's a little bit old. And this reality of the digital world, I guess that is very far from each of us because we are not the generation who grown up with... Um, Sorry, I'm just a mute. Yeah, okay. Uh, in the digital world. Mm, this is why uh, I choose this title because I want to ask you just reflect, then we can share which is the finger that you use to type on your smartphone. I'm sure that some of you still use, you know, the doing like that. But you, we know that young people use two hands. They hold the microphone, the smartphone with their two hands and they digit type with both, um, with two fingers or more fingers. So this is the, just to understand which the generation we belong actually. Um, we very often talk about generational gap in digital world and guess what? The recent, recent studies uh, made by scholars in different countries, they, mainly in Europe, they realize that the adults, adults, I'm talking about 50, sec, uh, people of 50, 60 years old, are very attached to their uh, smartphone. So they use a lot for traveling, to connect with friends and actually what happened and in Facebook that is the most the most the wider the widest um, social media at the moment uh, the the age of people of the users is from 35 to 55 so this is very interesting it's not young people are not in Facebook I'm trying to move, here we go. This is a very funny thing that a professor, uh, David Foster Wallace shared during a speech in a school in 2015. And the story is that there are two young fish swimming along and they happen to meet an older fish swimming the other way. Who nods at them and say, morning boys, how's the water? And the two young fish swim, for, swim, on, swim on for a bit. And then eventually one of them looks over at the other and goes, 
what the L is water. So I think this is our reality today. Young people grown up in the water, they are not able to see the water at the distance. We are aware that the water is not our reality. So for us, it's very easy to see the difference. So how we can meet each other? This is the key question, and also as religious sisters. The young fish can learn from us how to live in the digital world with wisdom. Because they grown up in this, in this world, but they don't know this world. They cannot see it in, at, the dis, at the distance. We, adults people, can learn from the young people the technical stuff, but we need to accept that the, our water is not the only, the unique reality of the world because the perspective of young people is completely different. I know that in the congregations or also in the families, there are a lot of judgment between young and older generations because we usually say, oh, you are losing. I, I heard this sentence also in the congregation from, you know, uh, adults, adult sisters saying you are losing your time on the mobile, but actually we know that young people do not experience the difference between online and offline. Am I clear? Okay. Um, it's interesting that, for, for instance, the last generation who, were, who was born without, outside the digital world, so outside the internet, is the generation that goes from 65 to 80. So can you imagine from 80 up to now, all the generations grown up and were born within the digital world. So I don't know if you can see, think also of some of your sisters coming and entering your congregation. I want to share, we usually start with the prayer, the webinar, but today I decided to use this testimony from uh, Brianna. She's a young uh, woman. She's uh, invited, she was invited at the Synod and she is a lay person, but she belongs a faithful association. So I think she's also discerning for vocation for consecrated life. I invite you to read by yourself this testimony. Sister Susanna, I will send you the presentation and PowerPoint, so do not worry if you don't want to take photos. I will send it to you. I'm unmuting your microphone because I would like to ask you. Yeah, I will send the presentation to all of you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hi, Maria. Nice to see you. 
I would like to ask you what struck you most about this testimony? Which sentence, which words touch you more, most? Your microphone on, on so you can talk. I like is that we young people desire dialogue, authenticity, and participation. Thank you, sister. Um, uh, also I'm also touched by that same sentence. We young people desire dialogue, authenticity, participation. Uh, for me, I think young people of today searching uh, for our identity. That's right. Thank you. Other comments, other sharing? Maria, we can't hear you. I think your microphone is... No? I see your mouth moving, but no. No way, no. Make sure that the volume is on. Maria, try. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you very much to all. And it's interesting the um, sharing that we had from the Synod, also the bishops and the cardinals felt reinvigorating by the presence of young people. So I think that there are key words here. First, searching for meaning, identity, desire, participation, authenticity. I think that all this stuff have to do also with the responsibility that we have as educators. We cannot talk about youth if we don't talk about what is digital world now in this moment. So from the perspective of the uh, of the young fish, actually. For us, it's very difficult to understand the, the world and to understand how the network works because we grown up in a hierarchical and pyramidal society that is predictable and solid. Today, the digital world and liquid society is telling us that the world is horizontal, changing, interconnected, difficult to predict, liquid and fast. Can you imagine how we can try to make these two different worlds in dialogue? The digital work world works as our brain works. Dot, connections, exchanging, Everything is more or less on the same level. It's interesting that the digital world where all the adults are in, we are in this world, is horizontal, but our cultural mental setup is still ver vertical, hierarchical. So how we can try to find a dialogue? And in my opinion, this is the first obstacle for all fishes to deeply understand what youth, youth thinks, feels, and acts. Let's see now from the perspective of generation. Sorry, but I feel okay. There are mute, okay. So for the people uh, born from 40 to 60, 90, of course, they, they are the baby boomers. So after the Second World War, you can imagine the characteristics will be the, the um, uh, 
the desire to build up a new society. Then we have from 60 to 80, what we call the X generation. So they are the children of the baby boomers. Then we have the Y generation, Y generation from 80 to 2000. And today we are talking about the Z generation or as different scholars call them I generation. So from the 2000 to, uh, until today. And of course, the Z generation are the, is the chil are the children of the Y generation that is the most narcissistic generation because they grown up in a different, in a very rich reality, most of them. We are talking about Western and European culture, most of them. So the Z generation, the I generation is a result of this generation. I'm saying that because it's very important to understand that. Because otherwise we say that the youth, pe youth people, young people are very far from us, are very different from, different from us. Actually, they are our children. They are the children of our culture. Now, I would like to go more in depth about the characteristics of our culture. And the Z generation is the generation, the interconnected generation. They were born, they grew up, grown up in internet interconnected world. They don't know any other world than the digital world. Some other data, 42% of the world population are less than 25 years old. When we talk about young, we talk about of young, of people from um, 16 to 29 years old. This is the range that Pope Francis also decided for the Synod. But actually we know that there were also some older young. Of course, the situation is very different from a country to another because we have countries, I, I can talk about my country, that is Italy. In my country, the population is very old. We have actually a negative development. So uh, in Europe, there are some exceptions, but this is the trend. In other countries, the population is more, it's like 60, 70% of the population. You can imagine also how that affects life. What are the challenges of this stage of life due to biological and cultural aspects? Conflicts, conflict between who they are and who they will be. Conflict between who they think to be and how people see them. You can imagine how important it is the reactions of people, of the others, for adolescents and young people. Don't forget that because we will recuperate that later when we talk about bull, bull, bullism and cyber bullism. Most of the dark web um, um, problems come Comes from come from this this difficulty of young people, fragile identity because it's not completely developed, and this is very important. Which is the role of adults and which is the role of peers? We know very well that the digital world has uh, increased the role of peers. We will talk about that when we talk about YouTube. We, who influence most young people? The family or the peers? The digital world has increased a lot that. Lack of reliable adult, adulthood models in our society. We know already that we have a problem of adulthood. Adult, adulthood in our society. I'm sorry for my English. 
because the adults compete with their children to be younger than them. It's very interesting. We don't have reliable adults. So now, sisters, this is, a, this is a good place, this is a good space for religious sisters to be reliable models for young people. Mainly the religious sisters who are older. Another research stated, states that young people prefer to talk with old people than for instance from for with my generation because i'm not i'm not young and i'm not old but old people are seen as wise people i'm not saying that religious sisters are old i'm saying that sometimes in the religious congregation we think that old people do not have a mission actually we have they have a mission and this is a space for religious sisters to be modeled to be educators. The, finan the financial crisis affected the sense of future. They are not able now to see the future as a good, as a space of hope. To understand this world of youth, we have to understand what we call postmodern postmodernism because they are within this culture and the, the digital culture is within this world and they affect each other. So what are the characteristics of the postmodern culture? It's not just for young, we are within this culture, also as religious people. This culture says or makes us think that we are almighty we might be like God. The digital world increases this idea because you know what is intelli in artificial intelligence. So now people think that a, a brain, a machine can work like our brain. So it's, you know, the, the relationship between human being and machines are changing a lot. This is the culture of individualism, the I generation, my feelings, my identity, my space, my future. I'm wondering if this is the consequences of a time where common, where sharing was more, let's say, uh, highlighted than now. Another characteristic is to be global, but very superficial. Because we don't have time, because we have so, uh, so many inputs that we don't have time to go more in depth. We are the generation, we are the culture. This culture is the culture of reaction. It means that we react to events we do not act, we react. It means that when I act, I take a time to discern, to reflect. If I react, I just act my emotions. And if you see in the digital world, there are a lot of reactions instead of actions. Am I clear? We will have a break, just. The postmodern culture is the culture of data. Data is the most important product in this moment. It's not water, it's not dollars, data. Data uh, came up from the digital world. Digital world is a world of numbers, figures. There are scholars, please listen well, there are scholars who state that the era of interiority, the era of soul, 
the era of spirit ended. It means that now we are in a culture of numbers, we are in a culture of machines. Even for countries who are not fully developed, they are influenced by the same culture. So now I need to stop just a second. I am muting your microphone so you can, if you want to say something. This is very important for us, sisters. So which will be the role of religious sisters within this digital world with young generations? I don't know if it's true that the era of interiority is ending, but it's interesting. How do you feel with that? Maria, you can write in the chat if you want. I will stop in just a second. How do you feel, sisters, with this panorama? Mm. Yes, uh, Patricia, thank you very much for the clear explanation. And uh, I'm very touched when you said, when the culture of react, reacting than acting, and this is reality, because when we notice something uh, among the young people in communities or in society, the first thing is to question, see what is going on. But sometimes it's, I feel it's necessary to find out why is it going on before uh, <laughs> concluding or putting a, a, a sort of a full stop to whatever you have seen. And with what you have said, the different generations, if we really understand that some of us were born when the phones, cameras of different types were not even available. And today, a young person will not understand that there was a time that those things were not available. It's like a dream when you talk to them about it. And it needs really a forum where they can, uh, we can really say what they are using is of their time and we need just to understand why they want to use it and guide them to use in the right way. Then say, no, it is not good or condemning immediately. So that's my... Thank you. Point. And my, I'm wondering if we are ready to do that. I'm not sure. Sorry, I work with religious sisters and I have the impression that sometimes we are a little bit naive in the... In the digital world, you know, how we use the social media, how we use the digital world. Sometimes we are not able because we don't know this reality. There are formators in the congregation who have no clue of what is the, the digital world. This is why we have to learn to understand and then we can help them. Yeah. But we will see that later on. I don't know if you have any other comments or preoccupation or... Um, according to me, it's it's unavoidable at this side. No, it it is uh, when we also maybe uh, take uh, my example. If I go touring out, uh, go to another country, or when when there is no communication, we get lost or things are not happening. No, so it, it because these facilities available, we need to make use of it and also uh, make the best use of it for the right purpose. And as sister said, it's, it's up to us, even in the congregation and in outside when we work with uh, youth, to make, to make the right choice, yeah. to give them both, say the, the right, best side of it and the bad side of it. For example, I work with um, 
women in the entertainment sector the youth in the entertainment sector uh, they are into dance bars or the cabin restaurant uh, having daily wages or things like that so they connect themselves without knowing into facebook and they invite friends whom they do not know even and they get into trouble after that because of ignorance so in our uh, life skill sessions or leadership sessions and the in house activities we have one social media and its benefits and the and the causes so we try to explain to them how they can keep their privacy at the same time make use of it so that's something very Thank very you. important wherever we work in any area it can be school or it can be that's right that's right wherever how we can educate them in it exactly exactly this is very important so sometimes we don't know which is we will see later what is the dark web for instance the uh, in internet and the digital world does not create illegal or inhuman actions actually give more space give and like an infinity space to increase the illegal criminal and he in human activity sorry i have to mute your um, microphone because otherwise the noise is very okay do you want to say something dusty no <laughs> okay, sorry, <laughs> because I'm muting your... Okay, let's go a little bit further, further, you know, about that. And now we are going to see what are the aspects of the biology that affect this, 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 um, the, the, the young generation. They have an ongoing identity, we told that, we told already. It's important for them how the others see and judge them. This is a very important, I will repeat it. It's very, it's, for them it's important how the others see and judge them. I'm repeating that because this is the bias for the problem of grooming, ex sex extortion and abuse online. Because what, what does the perpetrator? Is going to use the fragility of the person, the fragility of the young person. So grooming, it means that he, um, he show himself, I'm talking masculine because this is the, the majority of perpetrator, perpetrators. So he shows himself as a good person as a person who takes care of the others. He's the person who say, says a lot of good things of the other. Oh, how beautiful you are. Nobody understands you. This is the first thing. This fragility is used to find people, minors, also for pornography and sexual abuse online or to traffic people. Sisters, we are not neutral in this world because actually I heard bad stories also from religious sisters who remained caught in this network because they gave, they trusted in people who they shouldn't online. So it's not just a problem for young people, it's also a problem for sisters, young sisters, or also not yet, not so young. Another important character, sorry, another important characteristics of this uh, stage of life is they do not have limits. They do not have the awareness of the limit between life and death. So they try always to overcome boundaries and limits. And this happens also in the network. I will tell you something more later. The other aspect 
is the role of family and the role of pairs. Who influences my choice as a young is not anymore my, my parents, but the influencer is my friends or influencers in the network, in the, in the digital world, like YouTubers, YouTubers, Instagrammers. Can you, it's interesting English how it works. Um, from the social media, Instagram, we create a noun to call the person who manages so well this social, uh, for, so social media to become an influencer within this social media. Am I clear? So YouTubers, Instagrammers. I'm wondering if it's a dream that some religious sisters might become influencer in this digital world. We have to learn how to manage these new channels to talk with young people. You have a lot of resources to do it. You do such a good things that you can become influencers in this world. If congregation refuses to be in the social world, they have to be aware that they are cutting out a good percentage of the population. That is the future of our society and of our church. I'm aware that there are a lot of resistance, fears. We are always fearful for what we don't know, we ignore. Because actually digital culture is an, is an unknown space for most of our sisters. This is why it's very important, the training. The third aspect, why I have chosen this pyramid at the vice versa, you know, at the opposite, contrary. Because the digital world is within this world and affects a lot the young people. What are the characteristics of the digital culture? is horizontal. We talk about post-truth. In the, in, the, in the net, everybody has the right to say her, his truth. And might be a truth if, if it becomes viral. But it's also true that we are, there are a lot of problems of fake news. It's very difficult to recognize the fake news. So be very careful when you share news or you share photos or something. Make sure that it's not a fake news. In the digital world, all the people has the same right to talk. So for instance, we have dialogue, for instance, in Facebook, in the comments area, a doc, if the item is like how to cure a cancer, a doctor, has the same right to talk and the same um, power of truth as me, for instance, that I'm completely ignorant on this field. Can you understand this, how that affects also our Catholic world, where for us we have truth, the gospel, the dogma, so how we can we as religion, Catholics people and religious people are one of many other actors in the network. Are we ready to, be, to, de to do that? It's very difficult, my sisters, because our congregations are thought and structures as hi hierarchy, hierarchy, by a pyramid. So it's very interesting. We have to change. We don't have to give up our truth. We have to learn how to live it in a different world, in a different, in a different structure. Another characteristics, characteristics of the digital culture is the online, on life status. There is no difference between offline and online. Young people are on life, always on. 
which is the role of the body in this culture when most of our young people interact within a digital space that is not material but is very real please don't say that the digital world is not real it's very real and unfortunately sometimes but it's not material i know a lot of people who are my followers on facebook which i have never met them but our relationships are very real if one day i will meet her or him they have already an idea of my identity the other aspect of the digital culture that affects a lot the young generation is the artificial intelligence and the augmented reality there is now a trend for cloud games we i will show you later the cloud games are game that i can play in my house with my mobile or with the tablet or through my computer i'm in a cloud space with other users coming from all over the world and we play together the same game this is a very uh, a very um an hobby actually that our young generation have but we don't understand anything about this world at least myself I'm sorry, I mean, I don't want to give you the impression that I'm a, I mean, you know, I'm, my charge is communication. So, you know, that I don't want just to highlight the dark side of this world. I'm just, I just want to highlight our difficulty as adults to be within this world and to dialogue with young people. In the, in the final document of the Synod, I'm sorry, it's just, in Italian at the moment, there are four, more than four paragraphs on the digital world because you cannot avoid this team. And the young generation use the digital world not only for to play or to be in communication with others. It's also part of their life to use it for solidarity. There are application apps that can be used for, um, how do you call it in English, for people who, are, who live on the, on the street, for instance. Or there are application to uh, help people who are in danger, for instance, for a earthquake or typhoon or whatever. And the people who are most um, comfortable with this application are young people how we can work together to be in solidarity with these countries, for instance. Mm, we talk about the dark side. It's true that there is also the dark side of this world. But the social media, for instance, are very helpful, have been very helpful, for instance, in some political crisis in some countries, Iran, uh, Tunisia and other northern countries of Africa or for formation this is I invite you to read the instrumental laboratories of the synod where they talk a lot about how the digital world can help the young people to train themselves to be more skilled for this global society through the digital world A research, uh, a Spanish foundation made a research uh, through questionnaires for young people. This was came up, but I don't want to talk too much on that, but there are very interesting things. They are not very interested in politi politics and social socialization as we think socialization years ago. Polarization, they are more polarized, polarized. It means that they are for extreme right or extreme left. 
vulnerable and insecure. Family is a stable point of reference. This is very interesting. It's a point of reference, but at the same time, family does not influence the young actions. This is a very important point because of the crisis, my sisters. Job is not the priority anymore. We have young people who do not work, who do not attend a school, who do not, who does nothing. In Italy, it's very, it's very, it's huge, this percentage. And this is because of the financial crisis. They are more tolerant towards violence. They can accept with more tolerance violence in the world. The digital world can affect a lot this, uh, this aspect. We have digital influencers, we said that, isolated within their filter bubbles. Even though we live in a global society, Young people have less opportunities to be outside their comfort zone. They are creative and they have a huge need of communication. But the kind of communication is instant communication, fast, immediately. They are not on Twitter, they are not on Facebook, they are on Snapchat, they are on uh, WhatsApp. They are in Instagram, where the communication is very fast, immediate. You don't go back. You don't go back. You don't have a memory of your conversation. You don't have a history of the conversation. We have already done that. They live in eternal present moment. In the social media, there is no past. There is no future. It's always on the same level, which is the role of memory, of the human memory, when we assign the role to keep and to stock our photos, our documents to the cloud. Why should I remember something when I, go, when I can Google it? This is another very important aspect. And this is the consequences of the digital world. The attention is more fragmented than focused wider than deeper. These are the digital world, how it works. For the World Day of Social Communication 2019, Pope Francis has chosen a very interesting theme. The quotation of the Bible is, we are members one of another. But the, the theme is very interesting, sisters, and you have something to say as religious sisters, from network community to human communities. You know that community, the word community is very, um, often used in the digital world because around the social media, around an influencer that might be a singer, a blogger, a journalist, or a very crazy guy, there is a community around him, a digital virtual community. Perhaps they can meet also physically, personally, you know, but the community shares common interest, shares the same, uh, for instance, game or view, vision of the life. Don't forget the filter bubbles. The community tends to be within the same interest, the same uh, mental setup, the same views the same vision of life, the same style of life. Okay, now I want just to highlight very fast four elements of this world. YouTube, 
and YouTubers. Read what to YouTube, the, the tagline of YouTube. Broadcast yourself. Can you imagine which is the, the, which is the influence of this sentence? for a young person whose identity, identity is developing, is still information. There are very famous YouTubers who are just 16, 17 years old, who have like a thousand of people of followers within their community. They are huge influencers for our young people. And I'm sure, I'm sure because I have the same problem, I don't know, no one of them. But I suggest you to look for some, you, uh, some videos of these YouTubers to understand how is working the mentality and the identity of the young generation. YouTuber, the YouTuber is a normal guy who share personal things and explain how he fights in his or her life. You need just a room, a computer, and you can broadcast yourself. Everybody can do it. YouTube now is much more than a channel. This is why I consider it as a social media. There are people who play the famous cloud game through YouTube. And they can um, record how they play online and share their results. Do you think it's stupid? Might be, but this is how, this is what happens. This is the most, the darkest aspect of the digital world. We talk about cyber, cyber bullism, we talk about sextortion, we just, you know, open windows about that. We, do, we talk about grooming, but web challenges are very, very difficult and dark aspect of this digital world. What happens? One person, any guy, can just record himself or herself inviting people to challenge people to act on to do something. This might be just a very stupid thing like to drink two bottles of, of uh, beers in three minutes, but there are challenges that are very dangerous. People died online. It might be to, just to cut yourself or to throw yourself or to get suicide. So I'm telling that all of that I mean, I'm telling that to you, just because you can be aware of the challenge to be educators in our reality, in this digital world. We talk already about cloud gaming. This is another aspect that was, this phenomenon was most popular in Japan, but now is, developing many countries. The word is, this is a Japanese word. This phenomenon is ikikomori. They are people, young people, who never leave their room. They spend all time, they eat, they sleep, they play, everything in their room. Okay, sister, I don't know how much you are scared. How much are you worried? I don't want, I don't want you to get worried, but mm -hmm. I, want, I would like you to become aware. Now all your microphones are mute. I want to dedicate five minutes and then we have to close, which might be in this digital world, the role of the religious sisters? Mm. Mm. Good question. Mm. All your microphones are on, so just make sure don't say something to your sister or...
Can you hear me now, Patricia, or no? Yes, Maria. Ah, nice to hear. <laughs> Thank you. So first, first thing which comes to me uh, is to be present in this world. As, uh, as you said, this is the world where the youth live now. The first task for us is just to, to be there, to be in this world. Um, and second thing, um, I think that we cannot condemn what they do just to show the alternative way. Like today is Halloween. This is the first thing that right. comes to me. So there is a big discussion in the Catholic Church that this is something wrong. This is against our European culture, popular in the States, not here. But I think it's not about speaking what is bad, but to show the good. So, uh, for me, this is the task for us to be there and show the good, spread the good news in this way and in this world. Thank you, Maria. I agree with you, but we have to be more specific. Sure. What we can do, how we can be in this digital world. Um, just to uh, comment on my side is that uh, um, mostly this, mostly uh, coming into the Asian countries also, these games and things like that which some of them are aware, some of them are still not aware about it, about this uh, cloud game and things like that. So maybe more and more awareness and kind of education for them is very much needed. And that part, uh, that role as religious we can play wherever in our ministry. That's right, that's right. Thank you, Maria, also for your comment. Yeah, to add to what Sisa just said, I think uh, creating programs in our youth ministry where we meet young people, where there can be a forum that we allow them to talk freely on this, their choice in this area may help us to know the direction where they belong, and then we can come in with education or to give them the positive aspect of this uh, material that they are using each day. Take for example, like in Africa, once the young people get involved with all these games, they are drifting away from the families. And unless we have youth groups, communities where they can come to share, and you, 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 you will learn how to use them with them, in order to help them how to make, uh, to choose the right channels and so forth. That's what I'll be thinking to suggest. Yeah, thank you, mm. thank you. Some other inputs? Yeah, I think we can have a lot of presence on the, on the um, social media. Um, <clears throat> because we're women of the gospel, we can begin to share or preach, if you will, short preachings and post them on YouTube as well as on our Facebook. Uh, we need to have a presence that um, <clears throat> where we're interacting with youth also on, on our Facebook and on our youth, with our youth in YouTubes. Um, I think here in the US, <clears throat> many religious are, um, there is one uh, station in the US called Women Preach. And, different women uh, who are lay women as well as religious who are taking the gospel for the following Sunday and they are preaching and we're putting this out on YouTube. This is amazing because um, <clears throat> it reaches a, a whole host of folks, but it's uh, an interpretation also from a women's perspective, which is really important, which also gives another face or uh, picture, if you will, of women religious as well as their associates and other women who are trained theologically, who can also offer another reflection that might um, really touch the hearts of young people. So uh, there are many ways in which we can use uh, social media um, that is in a way um, a counter to what I'll, all some of the other 
pieces of information that are out there that are a little bit on the wild side, to say the least. But at, at the same time, that doesn't mean that we ought not be there. We do need to be there. And um, uh, <clears throat> even for vocation outreach, uh, although this is not about that, but uh, two of our sisters in our formation team have done what they've called um, uh, disco vocation. <laughs> you know, the disco. So they have this little fancy ball behind them. And they do a simple dialogue between the two of them on all kinds of things that might be questions that young people are thinking about. Uh, wondering, can religious um, go out for a meal? And then they talk about that. Or how do religious get assigned to their ministry? And it's a simple dialogue. It's not more than four minutes. I think that's the other thing is um, <clears throat> attention span for young people today is uh, very short. And so uh, trying to be creative and speak to them in a way that they will understand it's um, uh, so that they're not, don't get tired of us, <laughs> but at the same time, give a, a meaningful message. Thank you, Darcy. What? Do you have other comments, other suggestions? Another suggestion is a nun's life. Yes. It's a podcast. It's a website. It's, um, it has many tools for, for vocations. And they pray mm -hmm. evening prayer together with people all over the geography, geography. So A Nun's Life is a good resource for using social media in a good way. Thank you, Kathleen. Welcome. I want to welcome the people who join us later on. So thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still in my pajamas. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you to all of you. I just, I just want to highlight some elements about the role of religious life as my experience with you, working with you after many years. First, we have to know the digital world. Mm. What we are talking about when we talk about digital world, we are not talking about just Facebook. We are talking also about artificial intelligence. We are talking about how di uh, the, di the diagnosis of um, Ill illness through the uh, artificial intelligence. So we are not just talking about Facebook, right. but the, the youth people grown up in this world. Second, be, be the adults that they hardly find in other contests. Mm -hmm. Be adults. We have to be adults. We are adults. Third, ask questions more than giving answers. We are so used to in the Catholic world to give answers. Mm -hmm. Ask questions. Discernment. Let's help people to discern their lives, even though they won't enter in our congregation. Act as a mirror and not as an interpreter. An, an example, you are confused, or we can say, listening to you, I have the impression that you feel confused. We are able to do that in the, daily, in the daily life. We have to do it also online. In the Facebook, in the Twitter, when people are, you know, very, they, they can be very rude in their comments. And then accompany people online. Use Skype, use Zoom, whatever you like. Meet people online if you are not able to meet in person. Yes. It's a huge opportunity. You, religious life, can do that. Even though you are, you are sick, you cannot talk, you are in front of your mobile, and you can talk and listen to people. Mm -hmm. Let's create space where people can feel at home. <laughs> And the digital world can help us. We are a little bit late, I'm sorry. Oh, 
I don't want to cut your, I don't know if you have some other comments, some other reflections that we can share. I, th I think you did a really great job, uh, Patricia, in outlining um, the various social media that we need to be in contact with. But most of all, your, your uh, presentation was very fine. Thank you so much. Um, Patricia, thank you very much for your presentation. And then uh, we are, uh, you know, looking for the social media guidelines for the congregation. I found the, the you know, Italian the guideline in UISG, in the website, but uh, do you know how do I get the English uh, version of the social media guideline? Sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't understand you very well. Sorry. Can you repeat it? Say it again. Um, I'm looking for social media guideline. Okay. In UISG. But I found the, the Italian, you know? No, actually it's the, the handbook. Website. Yeah, it's the yeah. handbook, sister. Yeah. Uh, How to get the English one? We, we are preparing the English session. That's oh, I see. Part, oh, yeah. you're preparing. Thank it will you. be in 15 days. It will be online. Okay. Thank I'm you sorry. Very yeah. much. Thank <laughs> it's you. the handbook for religious sisters, communicating yeah. with religious sisters. Yeah. Communicating yeah. the mission globally. Yes, thank you, yes. Sister Susanna. Thank you very much. Okay, sister. Thank you very much for participating. Mm -hmm. And now in a few minutes, I have the Spanish webinar. On the same oh, <laughs> so Spanish is easier for me. So <laughs> thank you very much. Have a nice thank day. You, people who are yeah. on the other side and have a good night for the people who are on the other side. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> okay.